Hey, welcome to this week's class. And what we're going to cover is how to avoid the health food lies that are out there, how to read a label, how to find recipes that are actually good for you. Uh, there's just there's so much when you get walk when you walk into a grocery store, you just get inundated. You literally have to trip over a big box of donuts to get past a big thing of monster energy only to get to the prime before you can actually get to the stuff that's good for you. It's all marketing. Okay? It's all people trying to sell you their crap okay, that they say is good for you, but they're flat out lying to you. So we're going to go through a couple things tonight, and this is as good as my AV gets. Okay? So I don't have fancy graphics. I'm not going to have you know videos cutting into this. It's just going to be me standing here talking. So what I'm asking for from you is stick around because we're going to cover some really cool stuff, some recipes that we actually use, how to get recipes and change them, just change a couple ingredients. It doesn't affect the flavor and you still get good food. So everything that I talk about in this class is going to have a link either in the description of the video or if you're on my website and you're seeing this down below, there's actually a downloadable PDF. If you go to my website, you can download that and have everything that we're talking about here tonight. So that all being said, I'm going to ask for one thing from you, and that is I do need your help. And it's not what you think it is. All I need you to do with this video is if you like it, please like it, please share it, please subscribe. I have a goal of making this particular video my most watched video ever uh, because I really feel like we can make a big difference here. People just learn how to, how to turn a few tiny screws in their diet can actually make a big impact on their overall health. So that's what I'm asking from you. Stick around, like this video, share it, comment, because that helps me too. Hey, but just be proactive with this one, because I think it's gonna, like I said, it's gonna help a lot of people. So that all said, let's start this with my favorite quote from one of my favorite people, Dr. Andy Barlow, who says, Good or God food heals, man food kills. If you want to get control of your health, we've got to start focusing on the way food, or the way God intended food to be. That's the beast in the forest, the stuff growing up out of the ground. Uh, that's the stuff that's going to heal your body. Everything else that's been processed and changed is going to kill your body. So just like I say here, learning to make lifestyle changes is the key to keeping weight off, weight off regardless of how you use it. So whether you're part of this program, we've helped you get, shed some few pounds off or you have taken some of the, the, the new medications that are out there and that's helped you. Either way, if you don't make lifestyle, long-term lifestyle changes, the weight's not going to stay off unless you are proactive about it. And by, share, or by learning the things we're gonna teach you in this class, that's what's gonna help keep it off. All right, so here are a common few, a few warning signs, if you will, on a food label that are an indication that the company's lying to you, trying to tell you something, or trying to trick you into thinking that something is actually good for you. And number one is going to be low calorie. Our whole nutrition, pro, our whole government health agent, every government health agency that we have is still pushing low calorie as being a healthy food, and it's just frankly not true. Do you need to reduce calories to lose weight? Yes. But consuming the wrong calories is you can consume the wrong calories and a low amount of those calories and still gain weight and still be sick. So always be cautious when you're looking at foods that have labels that have the labeled low calorie. You can completely eliminate, eliminate this by just eating foods that don't have labels. Right? Second thing is low fat. Hey, the low fat fad set us up for where we're at right now with the obesity epidemic that we're dealing with. Hey, they literally came out and said, low fat's bad for you. Yes, the pharmaceutical companies had a lot to do with this because they were pushing cholesterol medications at the same time. But they say, you know, low, if you want to reduce your weight, eat low fat foods. Well, we have to have fat for our brain and nerves to function appropriately. We have to have fat for metabolism. Uh, be very, very leery of foods that are labeled as low fat. One of my favorites is low cholesterol. Uh, if you've read the book, the, the Great Cholesterol Myth, if you haven't read that, I highly recommend that you do. You'll know where I'm coming from on this. But the whole cholesterol paradigm, it's just not. Hey, <laughs> it's it, if you think think about it, 
And if you look back for the last three decades, since the 1960s, so four decades, almost five, I guess we're in six decades now. I can do math. Hey, how many chronic diseases have we healed with medication since the 1960s? The answer is zero. Cholesterol medications have not fixed the problem. Heart disease is still one of the number one killers. Hey, so when you see a food that's labeled as low cholesterol, be wary. Twizzlers, for example. You know, Twizzlers is my favorite one because it just literally says on the bag, low cholesterol, but they're so high in sugar and so high in, um, in food dyes that they're going to create all sorts of inflammatory, uh, inflammatory mess for you. Sugar-free. Hey, one of the things we're going to talk about tonight is sucralose, which is a sweetener that they use instead of sugar, which cre creates other health effects that we just don't want to deal with. So be very wary of, of something called sugar-free. I saw a drink the other day that was an energy drink that it said, as an advertising term on the can, it said an FDA-regulated beverage. I don't know if I ever want to consume anything that claims that it's FDA-regulated. That means that there's something going on. Hey, so it's just things, some things to watch out for. Yeah, number five, I'm being a little funny on, but whatever. So the point is, we're here to help you wade through this. And this whole class started with this particular post. Um, and it, that what this is, is a, this totally throws my lighting off, so I'm not going to throw this screen in on the, on the actual presentation. This is a recipe that was shared by a friend of mine on Facebook. And there's a link to this recipe in the notes, just like I said. But this was for a healthy granola bar. Okay? And the ingredients were, two. it was for old-fashioned um, old rolled oats, okay, People think oats are healthy for them. They cause blood sugar spikes. If they're not organic, there's an issue. Hey, they're not as good as you think they are, even though they claim to be. Chopped nuts, sunflower seeds, coconut flakes, honey, peanut butter, and it, the list goes on. I'm going to give this to you so you can see it. Hey, so I commented on it, and I basically said, look, if you take these two cups of rolled oats and replace them with organic rolled oats, you're making them a little bit better for you, and here's why. Oats are one of those things that are very, very highly treated with glyphosate or with Roundup. Uh, glyphosate, just please Google the adverse health effects of glyphosate. They are linked to all sorts of cam um, cancers. They're actually being sued now for, there's a class action lawsuit against glyphosate, the people who make glyphosate, which is Monsanto. Uh, for causing leukemia, they're just bad news, and we've been t brainwashed into thinking that this stuff is actually good for us because it helps our crops grow, and it's just not the case. So, in this particular recipe, swap out the oats. Hey, okay? and I also mentioned about the peanut butter. You know, it calls for um, one third a cup of peanut butter. This is the peanut butter that I would actually use for this particular recipe if we were going to make it. Uh, this is a Mar uh, Maritha Natha. I think they're trying to go for Mother Nature there. But I literally, there's a link to this particular peanut butter. And what's important is it's only two ingredients. There's not a bunch of crappy oils in this particular peanut butter. And if you use it for that particular recipe, you'd be good to go. Okay? They sweeten it with honey. Uh, there are cho It does call for chocolate chips. Uh, but I did put in the notes a link to a chocolate chip that's not as bad as other ones. I'm not going to say it's good for you, but it's not as bad as other ones. So what I hope you pick up from this is you can take recipes like this and you can tweak them and make them just a little bit better for you. Okay. So let's have some fun with some popular foods that people think are healthy, which are really not. Starting off with Prime. Prime is fancy marketing. That's all this is. And really, when it comes down to it, Gatorade is nothing is nothing but fancy marketing. A prime, they're trying to push this as a um, an electrolyte drink. They're trying to make this th think that it's healthy for you, uh, but if you read the ingredients, hey, I don't. If you read the ingredients, you'll see what I'm talking about. Hey, remember when you read a, an ingredient list, and I'm not talking about the nutrition information. I'm actually the list of ingredients. When you read these lists and you start eliminating foods you can't pronounce and eliminating foods that have big long lists of food ingredients, this is going to fall right into that case. So in this particular case, this one does contain sucralose, which we talked about before, which has been shown to disrupt your gut microbiome. 
okay, which creates metabolic inflammation, which is linked to all other, all other <laughs> types of bad news. So immediately when I look at this and I see sucralose, I say, no, thank you. Uh, but they also mix in here um, diapotassium phosphate, which is linked to a whole bunch of other health, um, adverse health effects. It's just, stuff like this just isn't, it's not good news. Okay. So as I said before, Gatorade's not better. Um, liquid IV, in my opinion, is actually worse. Um, the first ingredient of liquid IV, you know, they, where they're passing this stuff out at Costco all the time, the very first ingredient is actually pure cane sugar and then dextrose, which is actually just another name of sugar. So it's sugar on top of sugar. And then they throw in some vitamins and some minerals. And there's that dipotassium phosphate again. Plus, they put silicon dioxide in here, which is interesting because if you read about silicon dioxide, it's not a problem unless you inhale it. Well, what about the people that are making this? They're inhaling it. Okay, so again, just not, this is not a good product. They tout it as a health food. I, unless you're sweating, I would not, even if you're sweating, I still wouldn't consume this stuff because sugar is not a, an electrolyte. But point is, read the label, be, think a little bit more critically, hey, and don't just jump on this because the label wants you to think that it's healthy because it's nothing but marketing. Takes me to the next one. So, we, you know, we talked about uh, liquid IV. We talked about Prime. So what do you have said? This is what we use. And we have found that Element, um, the ingredient list is much better. I'm still a little on the fence with Element with... Um, they do have natural flavors in here. Uh, there's a lot of people that pull some weird stuff with natural flavors. They can put things in there without telling you. Um, but we have found this company to actually be pretty trustworthy. I've left a link um, in the notes where you can find Element. But it's literally, <laughs> it's salt, citric acid, magnesium, and potassium. Those are true electrolytes. They taste decent. Um, as far as sports performance, we've been very happy with how they actually make us feel. So that's a good swap for you right there. This is one of my favorites, as in things I will never consume. Uh, Premier Protein. You see people tripping over themselves to buy this stuff all the time. Hey, but if you start reading the ingredients, you're not gonna wanna buy this ever again. Hey, and the reason for that is, well, just look how many ingredients there are, look at how many you can't pronounce, and lo and behold, you know, we have oleic sunflower oil, which is one of the omega-6 oils, which is going to promote metabolic inflammation. We have um, carrageenan, which is, where do we start with that? With a known cancer-causing agent, they purposely give carrageenan to rats to create metabolic inflammation, yet they're going to put it in here and say that it's safe for us. So for that alone, we just hard pass on Premier Protein. We just don't buy it. I'm encouraging you to not buy it. It's not good for you. And you'll actually find this in a lot of cases where stuff is pre-made for you, like a pre-made Gatorade or a pre-made electrolyte drink or a pre-made protein. You're going to find a lot of dodgy ingredients in these. So that's why we don't use that one. Um, I did not put the replacement slide in there. I did put a couple replacements in there for you. This is the one that Kim uses from Ancient Nutrition. So there's a link to this one in the notes. This is the protein she uses because she can't have dairy at all. I use Bucked Up, their, uh, their all-natural one, because it has stevia instead of sucralose. Uh, this is a dairy-based protein, which Kim can't have, but I can. Okay. But those, again, those are in the notes for you. Except for Bucked Up. Um, I couldn't find a link to that one, so just go to their local store and buy it. All right, so let's switch gears and let's talk about recipes. When you're looking for your favorite recipe, and keep in mind, it's hard to do this with some things. Like it's hard to do this with like pizza, for example. It's hard to do this with mac and cheese, right? These are foods that you don't want to eat very often. They even once a week is still, how many weeks are in a year? 50, 52, that's still 52 times a year. Hey, those things need to be just very few and far between. But for most other things, if you put it, if you go to Google and find and just search for your favorite food and then put the word paleo or whole 30 behind it, 
you're going to find tons of options that you can make that will actually be very, very good for you. Or you can just start off by buying a cookbook. That's one of the things that we did. Uh, this is one of Kim's favorite cookbooks. This is The Defined Dish. I've got a link to this in the notes for you. Uh, we really enjoy a lot of the recipes that are in this one. Uh, they're all Whole30 Endorsed, which keep in mind Whole30 is a brand, uh, but most of the recipes they have are actually very, very good for you. So if you can find something that's Whole30, you're in pretty dang good shape. That particular book is pretty awesome. So let's talk about modifying your recipes. Okay. Um, as I said, mac and cheese is actually going to be pretty tough to modify, but there are ways to make it better for you. I, I went and I found a recipe, and it's just a standard mac and cheese recipe. They're pretty ubiquitous. And the recipe calls for macaroni. It calls for butter and flour. It calls for milk. It calls for cheese. It calls for se seasonings. This one calls for breadcrumbs. So if gluten's not an issue for you, then what I would do in this particular case is I would, the macaroni that I would use is I would go to a place like Natural Grocers and buy organic pasta noodles. And I'm doing that because that gets us away from the grains that contain glyphosate. Hey, so we're actually getting noodles that don't have a bunch of chemicals on them. Um, and so they're going to be a little bit better for you. Butter and flour, I would use grass-fed butter. Somebody on TikTok made fun of me for saying grass-fed butter, but it's a thing. It means that the cow that made the milk that made the butter was fed grass. Whatever. Hey, <laughs> uh, Same thing with flour. I'd use organic flour if I was going to make that. Uh, or if you're going to make this gluten-free, you can swap it out, make gluten-free macaroni noodles, and just use a like a Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one, um, gluten-free flour. Um, this particular recipe called for whole milk, which you can use a like an A2 milk or a raw milk is probably what I'd prefer, even though you're going to cook it anyway. And then same thing with cheese. Find cheese that is um, cheese from grass-fed cows. So there's an Irish brand that you can buy at Natural Grocers. You can actually make this stuff with quality ingredients and feel really good about actually feeding that to your kids versus the crap that comes from, from a box. So... Um, but again, this is another recipe. It's pretty hard to make. It's pretty easy to make this one gluten-free, uh, but it's very difficult to make that dairy-free and actually have it taste good. Okay, so <laughs> we have this thing um, at our house where we bought a grass-fed cow. Okay? And when we were talking to the butcher about what cuts of meat that we wanted from this cow, I'm like, I don't know my cuts of meat, just cut it up and label it and send it to us. So that's what we did. I picked up a bunch of uh, packages. That came, I picked them up. They're all labeled. I stuck them in the freezer. And I literally, we play this game called beef um, roulette, which means when we're trying to figure out what's going to be for dinner or plan for our meals, I'll go to the freezer. I will pull out a cut. And if I don't know what that cut is, I will go to Google and Google what do I do with this cut. So today's dinner, for example, was uh, skirt steak. I'd never cooked skirt steak before. I know that's what they use for carne asada or whatever, but I'd never use it. So I went to Google and I found a marinade for skirt steak. Okay, so this recipe literally was a third a cup of olive oil, a third a cup of soy sauce, a fourth a cup of honey, two cloves of garlic, a tablespoon of red wine vinegar, uh, the, and then ginger, chili pepper flakes, and black pepper. Uh, the only thing in there that was sketchy was the soy sauce. All right, a lot of soy sauce has a lot of sugar. So the soy is highly processed with glyphosate. So with soy sauce, we literally do a one-to-one -one swap with something called coconut aminos. Link in the notes. Hey, <laughs> coconut aminos, we'll swap that. Right, That's the only thing I had to change for this recipe. And we made it. That is literally a picture that I took on my grill from dinner that we made tonight. So that was a super easy recipe for us to swap out. So let's do one more. Hey, when I talked about this video in our private group, Elena piped up and she's awesome. And she talked about the, um, the stir fry that we had shared as part of that group a while ago. So I just went and found another uh, soy sauce, or excuse me, another stir fry recipe. This is one that I just pulled off the internet. It's linked in the notes. And this is another case where I only had to change like one thing to make this actually good for you. So in this particular case, 
looking at the oh, two things, excuse me. This particular thing calls for three tablespoons of brown sugar. So if I was going to make that, I would swap that brown sugar out for coconut sugar. You still get a sweet taste, but it's lower on the glycemic index. I would swap out the cornstarch and use something like um, arrowroot powder. And then the soy sauce, I would swap out for um, coconut aminos. So that's how easy this can be once you learn that. Just look at the ingredients. Okay? And if there's an easy one-to-one -one swap, you just swap them out. You can literally make anything. We have awesome food here in this house all the time. And a lot of times kids, father-in-laws, don't even know that I've swapped it out for healthier ingredients. So that's how we do it. Um, I appreciate you guys being here. I hope you'll like these videos. If there's something you'd like for me to cover, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, we would love to make more uh, videos just like this one. So please stay tuned. Last thing, if you like my content, okay, if you've learned a lot from this, I have a 21-day blood sugar mastery course that I've built out. It's literally, this is a screenshot of once you're inside the app, this is what the course looks like. It's 21 days, there's actually 22. Okay? There's 21 days of short three to five minute videos plus a downloadable PDF that goes over the topic of mastering your own blood sugar. Okay? So that's there, that's available. It's literally $21 total. So if you will text the word glucose to 208-218-8622, I'll send you a link. You can have that course for just $21. There's like $1,000 worth of meal plans. All sorts of stuff already built into this. It's all yours, 21 bucks. Thank you. I appreciate you spending the time with me tonight. Hope you got a lot out of this. Please let me know how I can help. Right, it's a temperature warning when my camera comes on.